Okay, today we're gonna to talk about Facebook Audience Network and basically if it works or not and in the situations where it can work, where does it work? We've ran some testing on this, so I'm giving you the actual information from our PPC agency, what's working, what's not, as it comes to Facebook Audience Network. Of course, without having to watch the whole video, you already know by the title, the answer to whether you wanna do Facebook Audience Network or not is basically no. And in the situations where you would want to do it, it's mostly in a context of remarketing. But I'm going to go over all that, why actually Facebook Audience Network sucks so much, and why you would want to use it, where you would, would want to use it, why you actually would want to consider using it in those exact scenarios. So I'm going to tell you about how it works, why it works the way that it does, and then, of course, you can have actionable insight into whether or not you want to actually do Audience Network for your company or not. So with that said, I'll get right into the content. Facebook Audience Network is a part of a Facebook ads uh, platform that allows you to advertise on other websites other than Facebook. So basically, Facebook makes a deal with other website owners, app owners, or app publishers to get the basically the people who use Facebook they already are aware of when they're on one of these other websites to have an ad show up for them on those other websites, so to say. And that's the idea behind it. But basically, the to simplify it, other people who want to, um, that have websites, uh, essentially you as the advertiser can advertise on other websites other than Facebook by Facebook being the middleman and whatever you pay to get on those other websites, Facebook keeps half the money. And so with that, when you do audience network, there's a bunch of mobile apps that Facebook has partnered with mobile apps primarily in order to give their advertisers more options to advertise outside of Facebook to expand rev Facebook's revenue opportunities. And uh, for some reason, basically, and I think it's because uh, essentially uh, the, there's uh, the people that have websites already, not apps, they already have plenty of advertising options, whereas on mobile apps, monetizing a mobile app, there's less options. Facebook came in said, you know, basically we'll pay you a little bit more than Gmob or what Google has given that app owner in terms of options to monetize that app through advertising, which is similar to how Facebook does it, playing the middleman and taking a, a part of the, the advertising revenue. So if you want to advertise on an app through Google Ads, you Google Ads pairs you with the mobile app owner and takes a part of what you're paying to advertise, gives part of the, the other part of the money to the app owner. But you're, when you do Facebook Audience Network, the reason why it doesn't work very good is because you're primarily getting on mobile app traffic. And uh, you're basically being forced to advertise on mobile in general now. So you can't just say, I want desktop only traffic and then Facebook Audience Network. You have to do desktop and mobile. And so if you do Facebook Audience Network, now you're going to be getting a whole bunch because Facebook Audience Network is primarily composed of mobile apps that, in terms of that's what's out there and partnerships they made with people who, other businesses to have your ads running on other websites. It's mo mostly mobile app traffic that you're now getting, right? And so, and mobile app traffic itself is actually pretty problematic. Facebook Audience Network I know is bad because we, when we use a click fraud software to analyze the uh, Facebook Audience Network traffic, basically we ran Facebook campaigns without mobile, uh, Facebook Audience Network and then with Facebook Audience Network using the click fraud software which we we use ClickSees for this to see if people ClickSees is a software that detects click fraud click fraud is basically whether somebody's trying to drain your ad budget and clicking on your ads maliciously or website owners that want to make more revenue from their from their advertising and people clicking through their advertising will have bots that click on their own ads and the, it helps to detect that as well and um, when you're running any kind of display advertising, that click fraud software does actually come in pretty handy, or can come in pretty handy. Uh, as you're advertising on, by the way, Google and Facebook itself, it's, it's less important. But anyway, ClickSees allows you to track both Google and Facebook traffic for click fraud. And so when we saw that the Facebook audience network was turned on, the amount of flagged potential fraud or uh, bot traffic went up. So in other words, putting two and two together here, 
a much higher percentage of the audience that uh, Facebook audience network traffic is bots or people trying to you know it would be mainly bots because people can't find your ads to maliciously click on them on the display network so it's you're talking about bot traffic but there's a much much higher amount of bot traffic on Facebook audience network than you're going to get through the regular Facebook ads that when you're advertising through Facebook ads itself and uh, with that said Facebook charges about the same per click for the Facebook audience network than they do for the Facebook ads, which is asinine. Uh, Facebook ads work so good because they police their website so well, there's no bots. On the display network side, there's a lot of bots, and so you're basically getting a really crappy deal on this extra traffic. Now, the idea here is, uh, of course, going back to what I was saying before, if you're going through Facebook audience network, when you advertise on that app, you're advertising to somebody who Facebook already knows who that person is, so it's better than just random app traffic itself, but it's not worth what Facebook's charging for it, and you would be able to tell that if you went ahead and ran this test for yourself. If you go ahead and you click under on uh, where you can, in your campaigns menu of your Facebook ads account, if you go under where near where you adjust columns, go to breakdown, and then go to platform and device, it shows you physically a, how much of your audience network traffic is on a mobile device, which will be like 90%, and it shows you right there, but how much of it's converting, and uh, it's not going to be much. Uh, for the most part, when we tested the audience network ourselves, the co cost per sale or ROI was 90% worse on average toggling when we, when we turned it on. And then, of course, we knew that it wasn't good, so we would turn it off. So... And with that, the only time for us it even made sense or at all was only using it when a campaign was already insanely profitable to try to get a little bit more out of it. And that would be the same for your case as well. You know, as you're advertising on display network, whether it's through Facebook audience network or any other place, you have to keep in mind that, you know, there's going to be a lot of bot traffic. That's why uh, mo uh, display advertising traffic on the web is generally cheaper. But again, Facebook charges a premium price for their display network traffic through the Facebook audience network, so it doesn't financially make sense, generally speaking. And through the reason why mobile app traffic is worth not very much is because there's so many accidental clicks on mobile app traffic on top of the bot traffic being an issue. Um, you know, mobile devices, you can already click an ad, you know, e um, accidentally, but on a mobile app, they take over the whole screen. So it's extremely easy to click on that ad accidentally. So for the most part, as per you're trying to rank opportunities of what to spend your ad money on and what's the next thing to do to grow your sales, mobile app traffic is, should be at the bottom of your list. It's not to say it can't work. As per B, for B2C or selling to regular consumers and not businesses, it can work in some certain instances. Um, it, but it's not, again, before regular website advertising, because of the accidental click issue, and there seems to be a higher percentage of bot traffic on apps versus just on display network in general, by the way. So um, as it pertains to all that, it's like the worst kind of traffic. Of course, you're feeding or, and using Facebook's data to you know, help making the app traffic a little bit better, but for the most part, mobile app traffic isn't very profitable. So, and you're paying a very high price for mobile app traffic through Facebook audience networks, audience network as compared to like what you would pay for mobile app traffic done through Google's display network. And most, you know, when you add all this stuff up, it doesn't really make sense financially and usually it won't be profitable for your company. Where it can be profitable is when you're doing remarketing just from the standpoint that you're targeting such a profitable audience to begin with. And so with that said, if you have a campaign that you're running out, like a remarketing campaign, you have a thousand percent ROI. You'll, let's say you only need a 700% ROI on your campaign to be profitable. That's a time where I would try audience network and see if you can't make it work. Whereas the results are 90% worse on Facebook audience network, that pertains to cold traffic or not non-remarketing. On the remarketing side, we're getting, yeah, it's 30 to 75% worse than the Facebook traffic itself on Facebook or from Facebook.com. But if your campaign's already really profitable, that's the time where it would make sense to give it a shot. And of course, like I said, you can go under breakdown in your account after running it just for 30 days, go under um, platform and device or just platform, and you can see the results for the audience network as opposed to the Facebook 
traffic itself and then make the decision for yourself. Given the information I've given you here, now you know whether to you know, stick with the program and maybe it will come out on the other side okay or you know, be able to cut your losses earlier, which you'll be lucky to get Facebook Audience Network to work for cold traffic and because of what I have told you here and what is the reality. Having tested this many times ourselves, having seen other clients when we bring clients on, and they've been running Audience Network and looking at that and then getting rid of it and then the performance of the campaign generally coming up right away. Now another thing about Audience Network as well that I'll uh, mention here real quick is of course if you have Audience Network on and you don't have sales tracking on your campaign and you don't have the campaign objective set up for sales, right? you um, are going to basically have the campaign try to push more and more audience network all the time. And so that's something to be aware of. You, you, you can monitor how much of your traffic is going to the audience network um, because if you have link click specifically as your campaign objective or uh, link clicks, what's going to happen is the link clicks are going to be cheaper on the audience network than on Facebook. So naturally the algorithm is going to keep pushing a higher and higher percentage of your ad budget towards the audience network because of it's getting you cheaper clicks on the audience network, which can tank completely a campaign that you had in terms of the performance and ROI that it was producing for your company. I've seen before where audience network can end up being 90% of the traffic you get from a campaign when the campaign's optimized for link clicks and they're not, they don't have any kind of sales tracking so they had to optimize for link clicks. And so therefore, that's another thing you should be aware of if you're going to try this or in general if you're doing it. Maybe you're doing Audience Network right now. You should check out how much of your budget is going to Audience Network because of this fact. Um, in addition to this, if you're actually optimizing for leads, not sales, you should be very aware that if you're doing audience, uh, Facebook Audience Network that these bots that I told you that are already a problem on particularly on, on display network but particularly on mobile apps out there that the bots are sophisticated enough now where they're, they're clicking through your ad and going into your look for a contact form on your landing page or on your site and then filling out the form and then to make it look like the traffic on their site is good so that you keep advertising on their website so the demand for the advertising on their websites higher and so that they don't get shut down as quick from Facebook knowing that you know all the traffic on their site is crappy and that's what they're looking for. If, if they know when you have bot traffic if they couldn't tell it already by the performance of the traffic and then they don't want to recommend you know advertising on a site that has bot traffic you know to a degree obviously they they don't care about it only so far but if so therefore if you're optimizing for leads and the objective is leads you can still have the same problem where audience network skews more and more and more towards your budget going to audience network because it's producing the cheapest leads, but the cheapest it's only the cheapest leads because of the bots filling out these bogus leads in your lead form. So what you got to do when you switch on and you got to test audience network is you need to look at the lead quality and specifically what's the ratio of leads to qualified leads that you have before and after turning on Facebook audience network and see if that ratio of leads to qualified leads changes after you turn on Facebook audience network. So and even better would be to go ahead and um, set up what is called offline conversion tracking where when so you basically which is you'll notice when somebody clicks on a Facebook ad at the the URL will change. It won't just be the URL of your website. It'll have some stuff at the end, some code. There's a F Facebook click ID in the URL. And if you capture that U uh, Facebook click ID when somebody fills out a form by having what is called a hidden form field, this is not difficult to do. Facebook gives you the code to do it. You take that Facebook click ID and then when that lead is proven to be a qualified lead, you can take that Facebook click ID, feed it back to Google using a manual upload process or using software and do it automatically through like your CRM system if you have one. And then the object, the Facebook campaign will be optimizing for qualified leads at least. And then when it's looking to see if Facebook audience network is going to work, it'll at least not go you know nuts on the Facebook audience network because the bot traffic won't throw off you know the campaign because it has more information to not be able to do that. 
And of course, the best would be to track sales from your leads. If you're doing lead generation, track if that lead turns into a sale, how much that turns into a sale, and then importing that sales information back to Facebook so that it has even more accurate information to tell whether that Facebook audience network traffic is profitable or not to you and whether or not it should be pushing a higher and higher percentage of your overall daily budget for a campaign to Facebook audience network. And so the more information it has, the better it can get you results. That's just how it is. And Facebook, and, and uh, yes, it's not easy to set up initially if you don't know what you're doing on the offline conversion tracking, but it's well worth it to do it, particularly if you're gonna look, do Facebook audience network, let me tell you. So anyway, that's some extra information about the Facebook audience network as well. That's about as much as I can tell you and need to know. If you have something that's really profitable already, test it, but be careful. And so with that, I'll wrap it up with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a ton of other videos on this channel about money-making strategies, things you can do to make money, stuff to stay away from, all based upon what we're doing here at our PPC agency to be able to help you make more money with PPC. Actual, actionable advice and the best advice that I know of on Facebook. So you should consider subscribing and if you like this video, consider giving it a like and thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything that I covered today about Facebook Audience Network, stuff that you think I should have covered and didn't, leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment or a question on this channel, usually within a couple days time. I also have a blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build PPC campaigns the way that I build them here for our clients to guarantee their results. So if you're looking for a little bit more information on how to actually set up campaigns the way that are should are supposed to work and want more detail other than the, the uh, high level stuff that I provide on this channel, you can find other good advice there from myself as well. So with that said, I'll wrap it up with that. Hope you enjoyed and learned a lot by this video and avoided some potential disaster and hope to see you on my next one. See you there.